is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis, I'm going. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with a quick video. Today we're going to talk about a team that a lot of people respect. A lot of people have been you know, counting them out or thinking that they're done just because they did not have the best season. They did not play consistent basketball on both ends of the court, basically the whole entire season. And then they would lose Bojan Bogdanovic, Bogdan Bogdanovic. And that was a big, deep cut for them just because they was already proving that they can be a decent offensive team. And then they lose a guy that was averaging 20 points per game and a guy that can shoot the three. Plus, Mike Conley didn't fit the way that they wanted him to fit. Offensively, he was more of a liability, even though he started to pick it up as the season was ending, which they needed him to honestly do, just because he, he was starting to become a dud out there. And you already have Rudy Gobert, who isn't a floor spacer or really known as a scorer. And then you have another guy that cannot make a shot to save his life. It really, you know, clogs up the offense and make them a little predictable and forces them to take tougher shots. Now, the thing that people forget is that they have Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles was a guy that a lot of people felt it probably still is one of the more underrated players in the NBA. Even though he didn't have a Joe Ingles type year and he is an older player, Joe Ingles still does compliment Rudy Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, and the rest of these guys very well because of his ability to be a knockdown three-point shooter and a guy that can pass and make good passes to Gobert and other shooters. Um, never was the greatest finisher, but he is a guy with a high IQ. He knows when to attack. He knows when to shoot. He knows when to pass. And he's a guy that has been able to evolve his role, giving them somebody that's decent. You know, ain't like they're starting a G League player. They starting a guy that could be still a legitimate starter and knows the system, knows the personnel, and he knows how to get the job done. So I think Bogdanovich is obviously the better player because he is more athletic. He can do more, and he's more, you know, of a, a better all-around scorer compared to Joe Ingles, who is one-dimensional, really. But Joe Ingles isn't a guy that's a slouch. This is a guy that was a starter when they advanced past Oklahoma twice to get to the second round, he was going against guys like Paul George and Carmelo and really went out there and competed and held his own at the end of the day in those matchups. And he, he did pretty well. And even though Joe Ingles hasn't, you know, had the season that he usually has and he came off the bench, he still was a professional. And he still went out there and complained and didn't whine and complained that he wasn't getting the minutes in the time that he was getting prior to the last two seasons. And even though, you know, you look at Bo John and that's a big hit because you rather have both of them, you know, in general, I still think that the Jazz still is a competent team. I still feel like they have something to prove. They had a disappointing season even to themselves. And Donovan Mitchell, that was a guy that a lot of people thought would break out and have this superstar franchise changing season. And even though he's a first time all star this year, he really didn't live up to the hype to be honest this year. And it's not unfortunate just because he's living up to other people's expectations. Other people feel like he can be this good. They feel like he can reach his level. And even though he still went out there and had probably his best season, he still has a long way to go to breaking that superstar mode as one of the elite players, even on the offensive end. He's not an elite defender, and I honestly don't believe that he's an elite offensive player just yet. And if he does hit that level, that will be the, the player that can literally get this team from a great team to an elite team. And another problem that they had was Gobert wasn't fully locked in this season. He had a season that will become his first all-star season. I still feel like he was the all-NBA, all-defensive team um, center, first team. 
He has been the best center defensively, even though he didn't have that dominant defensive player of the year seasons that he had the last two years. He was still good enough to be the best center um, when it comes to defense this year. And hopefully he can be re-motivated, re-inspired as him and Donovan Mitchell supposedly squash the beef. Hopefully they can figure out a way to make these two guys coexist so that way they can get through the seeding games, potentially hold their top four spot in the West, and possibly try to make a run in the playoffs as a dark horse team. And the only reason why I say dark horse because a lot of teams, like I said, is counting, a lot of people are counting them out. And a lot of people are saying that they're done. And a lot of people are going as far to say, if you had to play one team in the Western Conference, what team would you want to play the most? They're not saying the Mavericks. They're not saying the Grizzlies. They're saying the Utah Jazz, which is absolutely mind-boggling considering that they are a top four team in the West already. And they have been pretty decent the whole entire year. They haven't been amazing. They haven't been elite. But they have played better than teams like the Mavericks and a team like the Grizzlies. They have played better than them all season. And people are still preferring to play them because they don't have that superstar player that can carry them. Plus, they don't have the elite defense that they're known for under Quinn Snyder. They have slipped on both ends of the court. And the biggest X factor is probably Mike Conley, too. What will he give you as a scorer? Can he step up? Will he help you close games or will he be a hindrance to this team? And will they regret trading for him? Because he started to figure it out the last three weeks, in my personal opinion. People are not saying that, but it's true when you look at the numbers and you look at how they perform. But what I will say is Donovan Mitchell is going to need some type of help outside of, you know, other guys on this team. Because Mike Conley is a guy that can knock down floaters. He can be a decent three-point shooter. He can break down the defense and, and open up plays for other guys on this roster because they really got a roster full of role players, honestly. Jordan Clarkson is interesting just because he had a very good season. When he got traded to the Jazz, he gave them exactly what they needed, which was that pop off the bench coming in, hitting threes, getting to the paint, get out in transition, and just having an attack mentality whenever he's on the court. I think that that's their sixth man. I think he made a case that he was one of the best six mans in the entire league. He knows his strengths. He knows his weaknesses. He knows his game. And Utah allowed him to do that. And that really, you know, powered their bench. Something that they was lacking all year was finally answered with him. You look at Moutier, a guy that we expected more out of, especially having the season that he had in New York. He was supposed to be a good pickup to give them some depth. And it just didn't happen that way. He ended up getting marginal playing time, if any. And he really didn't have no impact on the team. Royce O'Neal became a star for them, being able to guard multiple positions and knock down threes. He's going to be very important to how far they make it just because they're going to need somebody to help them replace that offense. If Conley can do 75%, they're going to need somebody to do the next 25. And Royce O'Neal or Jordan Clarkson or one of these guys are going to have to up their game to another level just to replace the offense that you'll be missing from Bogdanovich. Um, I think that that's going to be a key for this team to get out of the first round, regardless if they're the fourth, fifth, or sixth seed. They're going to need somebody to give them more scoring, whether it's Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, or even Donovan Mitchell scoring more points and playmaking better. They're going to have to fill that gap with somebody. And they haven't, you know, really had that guy that can do that just yet. They haven't found the guy that can do that just yet. And looking at this roster, somebody other than those three, I don't really see it happening. So somebody going to have to step up if they really want to go far and go somewhere. And I just want to know who that person is going to be. I think it's going to have to be Conley. That's what they traded for. That's what they made. You know, this move for us because they felt like he was going to be the missing piece that gives them that guy that can play with Donovan Mitchell, can defend other good point guards to great, and can go out there and give you 15 or more points plus a couple of assists. And he just hasn't been able to do that consistently this year. But with having a whole season almost, plus training camp, plus they're practicing now and they're all healthy, hopefully they all can get on the same page and really bring out the best of them you know, to win 
one thing that has always been great about Quinn Snyder teams is they're never been a one dimensional rely on one person team. They always did it together. They always did it on both ends of the court. And even though that slipped a little bit this year, they still do have eight seeding games to get it right. And they still do have the playoffs as they are locked already to be in the playoffs. You just don't know what position they're going to be in. They still do have time to figure it out and try to make a run in the playoffs and correct a lot of their mistakes and, and really go out there and perform a lot better than what they showed in the regular season. I know that Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell is going to have to get on the same page and Mike Conley going to have to play some of the best basketball he has played in his, this entire season. But it is possible that this team can still be a tough out as they know who they are, they know what they're about. And at the end of the day, they do still have enough talent when it comes to their top five players to compete with basically any team in the West that's four or under. And I feel like they're on the same level as a Dallas. They're on the same level as Oklahoma City. I just feel like those teams play better and they played their identity role better than the Utah Jazz. But that's not to say the Jazz still can't get it right, even though the odds are against them and everybody turning against them. They are a team that can still get the job done in the first round and they still can lock up a top five seed in the West if they do figure it out in these next eight seeding games and in the playoffs, they could be a tough out in a team that people sleep on. So that's all I got to say about the Utah Jazz. That's about it. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Like on my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. That being in the description and the comment section below. Like on there. Also, like this video and share. Liking and sharing helps the channel grow. That's a good way to support the channel that costs nothing but time. Other than that, I do make videos just like this, discussions each and every day. I also do breakdowns of players, rookies, legends, and summer league. Also do cover free agency, trade deadline, season preview, playoff predictions, and other discussion type of videos. So if you like these type of videos and you want a little variety, this is the channel for you if you love NBA content, as I do try to make a video each and every day. So other than that, subscribe, like, and share. And also check out my Facebook page and my website to continue to support me. Other than that, Quinn Wade basketball analysis is gone. And let me know what you guys think about the Utah Jazz and the Western Conference.